All right, welcome back, everybody. And it's been a little bit. Um, work is finally done. I'm on vacation, and I want to get back to the escape. So uh, now today's challenge is something I'm going to be doing for each video now. It's called just simply a challenge, where I change up the rhythm or the process of doing this solo tabletop RPG that involves our character Limmer navigating his way through this fortress. So today we're going to be going back to physical dice and then we'll be doing, uh, which I typically roll off camera. I don't have the capability of doing multi-camera anymore. And the other challenge is the Oracle system that we'll be going to for advice. And that is back to our tarot cards that are D&D themed. And then we have the booklet, the Bible it came with for, um, you know, verification or a definition of the card we draw, which is still leaves us, it leaves us up to interpret based on the draw. So, um, let's see where we left off vaguely. So remember, I don't take notes for this as often as I should, but, um, Loomer was back where he started. He is back in the main, in this main hall. There is his old cell, uh, which let me move the light over a bit so you guys can kind of see it. There we go. Back to his old cell. And actually, if you guys even need the light at all, I can just move it off camera because it's creating a big blind spot. So there we go. Um, so Loomer's back. He is in this hallway here. There is nobody directly in line, but there could be potential threats around the perimeter. So we need to roll to see if Loomer. He's right about here. I want to put him back just right about here as he entered. I want him to do a sensory check to see if he can hear anything. Because remember, this place is still potentially overrun by um, goblins and or bandits. So let's roll a d20. And what we'll do, we'll use the... The typical modifier, which is not on the screen right now, of what are the chances there? What is the what are the chances that Loomer can hear anything at this very moment? And we'll say that it's likely, which is plus two. Now I don't have the modifiers on screen. I'm challenging myself to remember it for now on, and that anything roll between a seven through a twelve, so seven minus twelve, is a maybe. So. Let's go ahead and roll. What are the chances that Loomer can hear anything? Likely is plus two. I rolled a five. So that's barely a maybe with a plus two. He can hear almost faint voices coming from this direction. So we'll leave a note right here for us. Faint voices. Barely, though, like it's just minimal noise. It could be voices, it could be wind, but he hears. Let's refine that to faint noise. Because it was such a low roll, it was a seven, that it might not even be voices. He hears something like wind, a hum. So Loomer is going to walk slowly, but he remembered that. There was someone, there was a lady in here in this uh, in this cell, this holding cell. So what we're going to do is roll to see if this oh, this, this uh, cell door is jimmied open or if it's still closed. Not whether it's locked, but like if it's actually closed or open. Not using the picture as a reference. So let's say, we'll leave that possible, which is just zero, no, no modifier. Nine. So... Um, what well, that tells me, that's just in the middle of pretty much the D20, almost. I'd say that the door is barely cracked open. But it's uh, the lock. There's a chain lock around it, but it's cracked open enough for someone uh, thin enough to squeeze through. So let's say it's about, uh, that's probably too much for a regular human to squeeze through. Let's say it's about that much. We'll do a little hinge here. 
and then we'll do a little uh, that symbolizes a chain. So someone broke through. And then we're going to have Loomer kind of walk up to the front of the gate of the cell door to see to peek inside. Does he see anything? I'm saying anything, but not anyone. Does he see anything in there? I'm rolling a 17, actually. So he sees something in there. And let's say, so because 17 is such a high value, let's pull a card to see what he sees. Now, the card we pulled, we pulled before in our very, very earlier video. It, it's, uh, what is this called? The Ten of Charisma, which is these two, uh, I'm guessing just two dwarfs or uh, two shorter creatures, beings. They look like they're growing something of heart, like a tree, like a sit, like a son or a daughter, a child of sorts. So parenting, parents. What I want to say, it's a picture. And I'm going to say that it was, uh, that picture is off to the side now. So we draw my card. You can probably see it on the camera here. I put the drawn pile right off the camera. Then he sees a picture of the person, the lady that was in this cell. And it's just kind of on the ground. It's because 17 was a, a pretty good roll. Let's say it's a picture. He can't tell if it's the picture of the family of this prisoner's family, but it's just a picture. He's not familiar with the prisoner. I'm trying to remember what we rolled to see if he was, if Luma recognized the person in when he was being escorted by the, I want to say, goblin. On the way out with the goal with before we uh, uh we helped carry out that large golden chest gold chest of gold i don't think we did recognize the prisoner based on what we rolled so let's roll to see if the picture is torn or not like it's ripped in half that's just a narrative spill i want to try so we'll leave it a possible one so the picture is in perfect pristine condition which means that well it, it it could say that the prisoner, you know, within the time frame we've left this fortress and now we're back, it's probably been what a half an hour in chronicle in um, story time, uh, in real time. So the picture, the person who was in the lady that was in the cell is already gone. So and and she le she left either purposely left or or dropped a picture, her only memento she probably had on her. So she's long gone. Now. Uh, is Loomer going to, he's thinking about wanting to get the picture, but the door is locked. Or let's roll to see if this cane has a lock on it, which most likely it does. So we'll say that doesn't need a roll. We know the chain has a lock on it. Uh, can Loomer squeeze through? That might be an actual dexterity check, I think. Let's roll to see if he can squeeze through this opening but i'm trying to see if we should roll for a stat the trait or do a oracle roll because it's it's a toss-up i'm thinking that we're going to roll for the oracle saying so is this the space between the the opening for the for, is the opening big enough for Loomer to squeeze through? Let's say unlikely minus two. I rolled a four. It is not big enough for Loomer to squeeze to, to through. And can what is the condition of the chain? Let's roll for that. The high the number. I I just rolled a critical. So the, the chain is like perfectly new. I rolled a critical right there. So the the chain is perfectly new. Just wondering how it would be rolling this here from you guys instead of off camera. Not that bad actually. If Matt does take on take on some blow, take on some uh, the bounce there. Okay, I might just roll it on the camera for you guys for now. And so roll the twenty. Um, let's do a strength check to see. Currently we're at nine because we did lose some strength in the prior battle. Um, let's roll a strength check to see if. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember if my stats are correct, actually. I have two health and we'll keep it as it is. Um, let's do a strength check to see if he can break that chain with his spirit. But we are down to nine, which makes it harder. So here we go. We're going to roll D d20. If he can break the chain, 
he can't. He's pulling as hard as he can. 13 is a fail. Um, even with my original, my OG strength. Uh, he tries to break the chain, but he can't. He's just he's failing at it, and he can't squeeze through it. So at that point, it's it's kind of meaningless to attempt anything more. Now, um, we could, Loomer could try to break the gate down, judging by his past experience with his original OG uh, holding cell right here. So now he's going to try to actually just take, examine the conditions of uh, using Will to see, we can either do just simply observing to see the condition of the door, the cell door, or we can roll for the Oracle to see what is the condition of the cell door. So the chain on there would kind of hint, is the cell door uh, rather old, rusty? And I'll say most uh, highly likely, which is plus four, because of the chain. I'm sorry, I'm going to roll on camera. Uh, 17. It is very, the, the door is basically beat up. It's very old. That's why there's a chain on there, so people can't break out. The prisoner can't break out. But breaking in, different story. Who breaks into a prison cell? Exactly. So what he's going to try to do, he's going to grab the, he's gonna, he really wants to get this picture for some reason. He's going to grab the door, and he's going to uh, try to pull it off its hinges. He's all his brute strength. So we have to roll a nine or lower to get that door off. And that was a critical failure. <laughs> I rolled a 20 once again, as you guys can see right here. Perfect, uh, cr a critical fail. Because uh, in this game, in Karen, it's opposite of the D&D. &D, and you roll uh, lower, the better, essentially. So 20, he fails. So even though the door is, is I'd say that narratively, Loomer is just exhausted from all the fighting he's been through. They're from the front with the goblins and the bandits and the, you know, the goblins again and killing Wreckedwood finally, etc. That he's just exhausted. So seeing that he's exhausted, he needs to find a place to rest because he's we're low on health. Uh, we are nearly maxed on inventory. Even though we're fresh on inventory items, we have a lot of inventory. Um, that plate of armor does get pretty heavy. So it takes off, it takes up an inventory slot. So Loomer is going to go back, uh, he's going to look around back here and continue down this uh, hall. And he's come to the intersection point, the intersection. He's still hearing that noise. But now, even though we have an arrow pointing which way the noise is coming from, we're at a point where now we have to build the we have to build the love, the scene up with these two other directions. We have other options. So, is there anybody to our left? Let's roll highly unlikely minus four minus four. No, no, there's no one there. It's four. I rolled a four, so we're we're getting a zero. There is nobody to our left. It is empty as it is empty to the left. So. He looks to his right, just kind of peeks around the corner. Is there anybody to his right? Let's say highly unlikely again, because the fact that we just hear faint noises, there's not much to expect from this corner. But there has been a discrepancy in time between this point and where Loomer is now. So probably maybe a minute or two because of the gate situation. Let's say unlikely that there's, there's anybody in this area here. Oh, there's actually, there's, there uh, might even minus two, that's 16. So there is somebody and that's a pretty strong, that's a pretty good throw. So with uh, a 16, I'd say that uh, if it was higher, I, I, I believe it would have been a immediate threat. Like we would have bumped into literally someone around the corner. But I want to say that a 16 gives us a good opportunity to uh, have an unknown person right here. So I'm going to use our. Uh, I'm going to use uh, not figures, but but actual marks to symbolize that there's someone here. So what we can do is basically draw a person right there. So um, Loomer, does Loomer recognize the person that's right there? Let's roll for it. I'm sorry, I forgot the modifier. Uh, well, too late now. I rolled a ten. He somewhat recognizes the person. It's the middle of the road. He. Vaguely remembers the person. Um, we know the halfling, so um, Green and Darko, Dar I, I completely forgot to put their names on the, on the sheet, but they're gone. The two allies we're working with are earlier, the halfling, Glee, Gree, uh, and Darko are gone. So they're not, they're not in the building anymore. So he vaguely remembers this person right here. Is this person a threat? Let's say highly unlikely. Minus four. Oops. Roll again. 
let's see, 15. So minus four, that's 11. That's underneath the top of the maybe. Uh, I'd say it's a neutral character at that point. It's a fellow prisoner. So I say that because bandits probably had prisoners from all other, you know, races and uh, uh, competitors, etc., other gangs. So it's a it's a fellow prisoner. I, that's why I think that would be the best op best narrative option. So this person right here is a fellow prisoner. So with Loomer seeing this. We're going to erase the faint noise, which that means it was just this person. He's going to walk into the middle here. Loomer with his back turned. Remember that. And Loomer is going to try to recognize the person. Now, at this point, that Loomer, does the person respond? This person responds. Let's see. I'm going to erase this, this person to a question mark, a circle. What I do need to buy is tokens, actual um, generic tokens, not actual um, figurines like this one. I want to use tokens for just practically anything, like a, from a crate to a person. But anyways, that's a future concept. Uh, we have a question mark here. Does this question mark person respond? Um, how should I say this? Respond as a threat, you know, physically, or let's roll a d20. The higher the result, the more possible the threat. So let's say highly unlikely, minus four. Okay, that at all. I rolled a three. So completely uh, calm and collected. At that point, fellow prisoner, I want to say that this is the lady that we saw a while ago in the cell. She is, let's say, um, let's give her a name. Uh, think of a name here. Carla. Let's say K. Carla. We have Carla here. I can get a figurine for Carla now. One second, guys. Okay, so that's the prisoner Carla, which I don't think we know her name from the pri our prior interaction. But, I'm, but I won't, what I'll do is write down um, uh, uh, NPCs. Carla, and then she was a prisoner. Oh, that's what, all we know for now. Lumber doesn't know that name yet. That's just for us, the viewers, the audience, to know of her name. Just so we have a label for her. So Carla's right there. She's um. This isn't a. Uh, I don't want to decide to use the pieces for NPCs that you know, matter. This is actually. I couldn't find a female, so I could just have this older guy. Uh, but Carla's a female character. Uh, so she's right there. And she stops. Be because we rolled such a low number, I want to say she's frozen. She's she's scared. Uh, not like, she, I wouldn't say like scared of us, but she's more scared for the possible that she's holding some, uh, let's say, let's roll to see if she's holding of anything of value. Uh, let's roll likely plus two. She's not. She's holding some, I, I mentioned of value. So like, you know, if she's holding like a, a, a box of just gold, but I really, I literally rolled a one. I want to say it's just some. She's holding like because her figure is holding something, and I kind of want to put that in the narrative. So she's not holding anything of value, but is it is it important to her? Let's roll highly likely or a certainty, which is plus six. Yeah, so twelve. That's eighteen. So it's important stuff to her. So Loomer uh sees her she pot she stops she was in motion let's say she was walking and she stops and sees loomer uh she recognizes loomer obviously from before loomer somewhat recognizes her he's encountered quite a few people in his little escapades going on through the fortress itself but he recognizes her now from earlier and loomer surprised he says he says, uh, you're in a hurry, and uh, she responds, I'll just let my way out. And he looks back at the gate and sees you're able to uh, escape through your gate, I see. And she says, yes, I was hoping to get back in there. She forgot her picture. And he says, he basically acknowledges that, yeah, he saw the picture. And she, she walks by him and says, mind your own business. So 
Uh, Loomer is not exactly affected by this. He's not looking to make friends here. So she, uh, he lets he let, obviously lets her go. There's no he's, she's no real threat. She goes into uh, towards her original cell. She's so uh, Loomer asks if you if she got that stuff from somewhere, and she turns around and basically tells him that that is her business and her business alone. So at that point, Loomer is simply uh, based on observation, realizing that. Um, she's kind of like him. She's possibly a thief or a mercenary, etc. Someone on the chaotic, you know, or not chaotic, but like a neutral or not exactly by the law kind of person character on their own. And she went to get her belongings that were probably in a, somewhere in lockup because uh, that explains why she's coming from this direction. Because if you go this way, there's that little lockup on the other map. So Lumeran recognizes that and she, she sees that um, she's holding just like a, a box of, or like a kind of carrying case of clothes and some belongings sticking out. So he, and then she, sque she squeezes through, she grabs the picture so we can erase that. And then um, if we would have been able to squeeze through that gate and get inside, we would have uncovered more details in the picture and he could have sympathized with her in this current situation or empath empathized with her. Like maybe the picture was of her family and he would have said, are you, you know, what, you know, what's your story? But because he didn't exactly, we didn't exactly have a um, successful interaction with her from earlier in the story. This is a failed opportunity for the story. So she squeezes back out. I'm not rolling for this because this is we already uh, failed to roll into this kind of plot point uh, subplot. So she uh, looks back at him. Loomer continues to look at her, and, and he basically kind of just stares at her and he doesn't say anything. And she continues off uh, at that point. So she's off. She's right here, I'd say. And she walks off into the other the other room, continues down the hallway. So she's out of the story at that point. Let's say she's uh, in TBA to be announced. So uh, at this point, does anything happen? We'll just roll to see if anything happens. We're in this location. 14. So something does happen, but not significant. But that, that's... Uh, uh, that's a pretty okay yes. Something does happen at this point. Let's pull a, we haven't pulled one in a bit. Let's pull a, uh, I almost forgot I had these. Let's do a card. We have um, King of Intelligence. So this is the front of it. Kind of have like these two heads. My camera, there you go. And the King of Intelligence is, it looks like somebody of worship um kneeling before a god so something either religious two-faced or someone uh approaching something significant so i want to say approaching some approaching something of power uh is a good way to decipher this is a good way to um read this picture here so i want to say that loomer can feel something powerful behind him with his back turned, but it, it's it's not clear what it is. He just simply feels it. He, he feels it's like a chill behind his behind him, chill up his back. He suddenly turns around, and because it's a, it, it's not a strong fourteen, there's nothing in his immediate area. He just has this uh, really strange feeling of some possibly some powerful magic that he feels, that, and it just you can kind of get a gives him a little some goosebumps but something is in this direction that he is really intrigued by the feeling of so he's gonna walk towards the dice and he's he comes across his old cell that he was with the halfling gray um and i'd say that at that point the door is uh the door's ajar at that point the door is open so uh just some you know he doesn't exactly he's not really interesting opening the cell so he passes by it and he gets around the corner here. We're still surrounded by possibly. I'll put away the big god here. We're still surrounded by possible threats. So I'm going to have to roll to see if he can sneak and um, notice anything. Does he see anybody down this hallway? Let's roll possible. Seven. Uh, that's actually a maybe. So again, he hears that same noise. So we're building up to whatever the card was we pulled. We're basically building up to something of great power and magic that's around this hall. So 
he feels and he, uh, hears that strange hum coming from down this direction. So uh, that's how that's what I'm deciphering from that card we just pulled. So there's nobody down that hall physically, but like spiritually, he's feeling something strange. So he's just being kind of he's getting pulled in to whatever he's feeling. And now he's at this other corner, which we've never been to, I don't think. There was some action here earlier in the story. There was an explosion or something. So obviously with explosion and all the festivities, have, all the issues around the story and the goblins and bandits, there is something of great interest in this building that the goblins originally had captured or occupied. And then the bandits took it. Why would goblins and bandits fight over this fortress? There's something of value either spiritually or physically in this building and we have to get to it so and that's what loomer is thinking he, he's realizing now that this isn't just some random bandit camp fortified camp there is something deep within this this uh building and so loomer is uh now basically peeking around that corner because again he's still ma maintaining his uh cautious approach does he see anything let's say likely he you see 10, it's solid 10. He sees, uh, okay, so in the map here, there's a wall. There's actually an opening right here. So he sees something coming from a light coming from, it, it, a 10 is pretty weak with the modifier. So eight times, eight two. 10 is pretty weak. So it, it, it's, he still hears the hum, but he sees a very low light or a low intensity light coming from this path that will reveal our next map that we can jump into. Now, uh, by the way, we walked past the cell. Let's roll to see if, it, if that door is closed for the narrative. Nope, not been exactly. Okay, I roll. I rolled kind of flat. Roll. Let's try it again. I want to get some uh, roll into it. There we go. Uh, one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's no one in there. <laughs> the cell is well. The door is is closed. There's no one in there, so it's an empty cell. So Loomer is going to walk towards the light. Don't go in the light, and he's right in there now. So what we have to do is a right is uh, go to a new map. Okay, so now Loomer is actually outside. So rather small part of the fortune, he's in some kind of uh, outdoor patio in the back of this fortress. So there's a wall that kind of circles. There, there's a wall here and there's a wall that uh, from the outside exterior of the building of the fortress. But there's uh, this huge, there's very large, um, I don't exactly know what it's called, but it's an outdoor area within the fortress itself. So we have, uh, there's basically, there's water here. There's a water here, which is, I'm just going based on the map. There's, um, there's water here. There's uh, blood here. Oops, I completely messed that video up. Sorry, I've been running from my perspective, but it, it's just a little easier for me to remember. There's a blood pool here, a pool of blood. It's a blood pool. Blood pool. You got blood pool right there, and then there's a, just a little room right here. So he's in a brand new area in this story. And Loomer is uh, between these tall, uh, there's a tall path that Loomer is standing in the middle of looking straight on so uh does loomer see anything in this big open area here let's just roll for it. we won't throw a mod modifier seven there uh, it doesn't see much so i'm going to say that he still sees that light but barely any light coming from straight ahead it's just a low visibility light um being obstructed by smoke so um how's the air quality and the, let's just roll you know higher the better air quality Air quality is not, it's it's good. Air quality is good. It's pretty clear. Uh, we're outside. There's some smoke. There's some like aftermath. Something happened here a while ago. But he doesn't know about the blood pit yet. But does he smell the blood? <laughs> the, the pool of blood. Um, let's roll highly likely he smells. Let's do a certain he plus six he smells it. So, yeah, that's a 17. So I rolled 11. So he smells it. He, 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 he takes a whiff of, the, of just smell of blood. Which would be just uh, iron smell of iron, and so he he gets really spooked out. And he and well, not I shouldn't say spooked out. That's kind of out of character. 
He's pretty used to death. So he's familiar. He's highly familiar with the smell. He sees um, this open. There's an opening right here about one tile size. He sees it and he sees this pool of blood. Is there anybody in this pool of blood, whether dead or alive? Let's just say it's uh, highly likely. Is there anybody in this area? I rolled a six. Highly likely is a four. So that's 10. Um, pool of blood with uh, right in the middle of the road. It's a dead animal i'm gonna say it's a dead creature that um because uh, if it was higher than a uh if it was higher than a 12 i wouldn't say with a goblin or a bandit etc a prisoner but we're talking like an animal so i'll just put like an animal here it's just it's it's a this is a bull but i'm gonna say it's just a, a four-legged creature that uh it's from an old because it's just a low roll it's just a it's a corpse of an animal that we that loomer can exactly doesn't need to really bother looking at so he sees that, he looks around, doesn't see anything else in the room. Just a, some kind of animal that's either, uh, we can do an intelligence or not intelligence. Uh, actually, yeah, intelligence check to see if uh, if he understands what's going on here. Why is there a dead animal in a pool of blood? Uh, let's roll for will, because that, that requires the mind. Right there, so nine. Okay, so nine is under 30. Okay, so he understands that this is some kind of animal sacrifice at this point. And I'm gonna put, uh, animal sacrifice, sacrifice for the story, in my own writing. Um, actually, I'm going to move this animal over and note down that we have an animal, uh, a dead, sacrificed. Uh, we'll just say it's a bull for that, for the just for the because of the figurine is a bull. You can probably, you guys can clearly see it's a bull now. Um, so Loomer is just, he's just, he's not really surprised. He's like, oh, okay, that's, that's different. So, um, turns back to his left and he continues down the path. He's, he still has his weapon drawn. We still have our, uh, X, which is D8. So I can draw my marker here. Uh, D8. If we ever get into the fight, we're preparing one of obviously avoid fights, but it seems to happen quite often in our story. Um, the D8s. And with that being said, uh, he's weapon drawn, ready to go, and he's now at another impasse in the intersection. So, does anything happen at this point? Let's let's just roll for it. Three. Nothing really happens at this point. Um, it's pretty quiet actually, and he's really surprised by this. The bandits, the goblins, they must have just been—they're gone. There's no one around here, and he's really surprised. He's looking around. He's expecting. Either more dead bodies of bulls or like um, uh, other bandits or uh, some kind of aftermath or some, you know, a battle. But nothing's really happened in this court courtyard. That, uh, that's the number. I'm trying, that's the word I was trying to think of. A courtyard. I'm sorry. Uh, my brain's in, is in slow mode today. So he's looking around expecting to see some kind of aftermath in the courtyard. But he also does he smell the. I noticed that these water, this, these little ponds are different colors. So one's probably dirtier, dirtier than the other, obviously. This one's a dirtier one. Uh, this one's more of a cleaner water. Does he smell anything coming from behind him? Let's roll. Uh, like, highly likely he smells like the cleaner water. Or it's the dirty water. 11. Yeah, so highly likely it's plus four. So he gets a whiff of, of the dirtier water in the corner here. So he walks over to this water. And is there anybody in the water? Let's say likely. Eight, likely it's plus two. So 10, once again, there is, um, we had an animal, we had a sacrificed animal at this point. Let's draw a card. Let's just, a 10, whatever we pull here will be kind of a very moderate version, a casual version of the card. We have this uh, queen of intelligence. So we have this mighty being that uh, seems very high authority with magic coming out of her hands and she's just standing there. So this is more symbolic than anything. I, I believe, let's let's read the book for this one. Let's, the Queen of Intelligence is, even though know, we've already looked at this one before, uh, from our earlier play, a different adventure, I think. I don't think we used the, I don't think we used uh, the cards for this game for escape. Um, Queen of Intelligence, if I'm not mistaken. Queen of Intelligence. So the Queen of Intelligence is, can I find it? 
Get two of intelligence. Uh, ten of intelligence. King of intelligence. The Queen of Intelligence is the necess uh, necessity to clearly communicate what you desire from the space of loving kindness. Okay, so that's what the book says. I'm going to say because it's a 10, he hears a female's voice coming from the waters. He's hearing a female voice coming from the water. And it, it sounds very, it sounds vaguely commanding like it, it's because it's a 10 i didn't roll like a 15 or higher or 12 or higher he can't really make out what the voice is saying he just he's hearing words he's hearing some unknown language uh he's hearing some unknown language being muttered to him some spiritual voice coming from this this dirty water uh this little pond uh, that's kind of surrounded by a, a high um a tall wall so he's hearing it but he can't exactly make out what it's saying but he's still, he's adding up that there's something spiritual going on here of dark magic or uh, uh, raw magic, etc. Some kind of just not ordinary magic. So let's, re let's remove the queen itself, the card. And then he walks, takes a few steps back. He's just kind of trying to process what's going on here. He, you know, he's a mercenary. He's not like a wizard. He's doesn't, not too familiar with magic. He just feels it. He catches a glimpse of this other little area here. So he walks over to that, this path. Does anything happen at this point after we looked at that little room of water? 16, something does actually happen here. So we've got to figure out what. Let's pull a card out uh, and see what exactly happens here. I pulled a card that's called a Knight of Intelligence. I, I pulled this card out before, which would be pretty often because uh, I don't, I'm not really good at shuffling these. So Knight of Intelligence is this uh, knight holding a hammer. Oh, not a hammer, like kind of a Thor's hammer, really, with sun, with a sun symbol around it. And it looks like he has his fist up. But I want to say it's something mighty of authority. So these three, something mighty of a, in authority. Let's pull the book out, because I, that one's a little different. That one's a little interesting for me. Knight of Intelligence. Look into the book. The Knight of Intelligence is channeling raw ambition into a constructive, thoughtful, and focused plan, which does suit this water too, because this water is clear. This water was jumbled up; like it's dirt. It's dirtier. It's obviously a different color. So this water was a little harder for the noise we heard coming from the water. The spiritual voice was kind of muddled, and this is just straight up death. So. Loomer's kind of understanding that these three areas are significant in their own ways. Like they all kind of symbolize something. This one's is clear. He's getting very clean, uh, clear feelings from this water. Uh, but let's let's roll to see if uh, I think this card kind of more symbolizes the what the water condition of the water itself. Let's roll to see what happens. Does he see anything in this area? Fifteen. He does. So 50, or I shouldn't say, uh, okay, he, he sees something. Is it another person or is it something like a person? Uh, it's not a person. So I rolled an eight with no modifier, which means I, I'm, because we rolled at 16 from earlier, if I'm not mistaken, it's a spirit. So let's get a uh, spirit because it's the clean water. This room is the, is the cleanest, like quote unquote, of the three so far, he hasn't explored this empty one, which is more of a void, uh, as I'm trying to plan out the story in the future here. I'm trying to find a figure that's very mysterious. Well, there is this figure here. It's a wizard, but it's a ghost or it's a spirit in, in our sense. Um, throw off the camera. It doesn't block the shadow. It doesn't cast a shadow. Um, so he suddenly sees a spirit in here, and the spirit is right on the middle edge backside of the water is this spirit a threat or i shouldn't say a threat because it, it's clear like this spirit was of a as a as a mighty uh, spirit so we got to figure out a story for this character for this spirit um we can either roll for it or we can grab a card let's grab a card because that's the challenge of this video this spirit is a page of intelligence so it's something that has to do with conjuring I, or here's the card 
page of intelligence. Let's let's pull out the book. There's the dice. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Page of intelligence is. Still looking through the book. Page of intelligence. Discovering new ways of communicating your ideas and pulling pulling them to putting them into action. Oh, look look at the D and D explanation of it. It says, sorry, um, there's a D and D explanation for it. A wizard. So it says a wizard wants you to find her some rare spell components. Finding something, communicating. So. The wiz this the spirit is trying to communicate with us, and it's a spirit of a wizard. We'll just say that. So it's a spirit of a wizard. It's a it's a basically a ghostly figure, a transparent ghostly figure, that speaks to because it was a kind of a high role. It speaks to Loomer in a rather um, audible tone. Let's say uh, this is part of our NPC group of people here. We'll keep Carla on there. Or she might come back in the future. Carla, now we have a spirit, the spirit of a wizard. He's talking, uh, and he's talking to Lumer about his room. So the spirit is basically saying that he is the guardian of the water, and he is uh, seeing that Lumer is not exactly a threat. He's not like the others that he's uh, that he's come across, and he explains that there's been many uh, many travelers have passed through this room, and Loomer is remaining silent. He's thinking about what to ask this spirit that just popped up in front of him. So he steps. Loomer steps inside. Does anything happen to Loomer when he steps inside of the room? Let's say likely plus two. Okay, three, so five. Nothing really happens. He just kind of steps in no difficulty at all. At all. Barely any inconvenience. So the spirit and Loomer have a conversation about the water. And there is something significant about the water, which we drew earlier, that there, it's very mighty. So at that point, Loomer looks at the water, and it's very clear that the water, not only is it clear, but the water is magical in some way because he remembers the room of blood from earlier. There was a room that is somewhat neutral in manner, like he's connected to the dots that these each of these rooms re represent something: death, uh, kind of a struggle, and then clear, uh, clear conscious. So he's uh, he's understanding now that uh, these rooms symbolize something, and he ta he's talking to the spirit. He's trying to figure out what, what should what should we ask the spirit. Um, he asked the wizard, uh, the spirit of the wizard. Uh, who he is, and the spirit says that he is the he emphasized or he says again that he's the guardian of the water. So we'll call him the what? Uh, it's pretty vague. We'll call him the uh, water guardian, guardian of the water. Let's say call him guardian of the, of the clear, and he's a he's basically just a spiritual guide for people who come into this room. And he looks around at the at the water. He says, can he step into the water? Does the guardian, we can say, does the guardian uh, of the clear allow him to step? Let's say a certainty because we already, he already doesn't see Loomer as a threat. A certainty. So a certainty is plus six with the eight roll. We're looking at 14. He the, the the spirit thinks about it for a moment, but ultimately he does allow uh, Loomer to step into the water. So Loomer steps into the water, one foot very slowly on time. Does anything positive happen to Loomer? Let's say it's a certainty that something positive happens. It's a fourteen, and that plus six. That's a solid. That's a solid twenty, not a critic, not a like full critical twenty. Uh, and because he steps into water, let's pull a card. Ah, interesting. Ten of intelligence. So with that, ten of intelligence. Let's pull the book out. Ten of intelligence is. Let's see here. Ten of intelligence is not one of the worded ones. How we deal with what shows up in our lives? Do we avoid or deny? Do we react in anger? Do we remain conscious and aware? So 
I'd say this this is very soothing for him. So he steps in the water, and the water gives him a feeling of decision. Um, to make a decision, basically. So this is kind of relevant to earlier in the past couple episodes where I was trying to figure out if I should continue the story. So this is pretty symbolic for me now and for the story. So Luma's eyes are closed, and he can hear the Garden of the Clear speak to him, saying that you have a decision to make as of now. Shall you proceed with your adventure, continue, or shall you leave? So Loomer has a choice to make here. And I have an idea what I want to do for Loomer, but he has to decide on his own. So, and we have control of Loomer. So Loomer, being the venturous mercenary he is, he says, I wish to decide on my own that I will proceed. And in doing that, he gets healed. So what we're going to do is roll a how significant the healing is. Did our HP and the strength or just the HP? So let's go ahead and let's say a certainty that it's going to heal everything. Well, oh gosh, it's a critical. It's it's a. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's, wait, I'm sorry. I completely messed that up. I don't know if I rolled a one or a seven. And I rolled an eighteen. So he does heal all the way. So because of that, we're we're going to heal our twelve, our strength back to twelve, and our HP back to four. There. So he heals up. There's a very uh, some there's a there's a little gentle breeze on his face, and the water, a glow from the water emulate emulates his whole body and surrounds him, and he and he feels rejuvenated. He feels relaxed, and he he feels like he made the right decision to continue exploring essentially this area, this built part of the structure. The guardian of the of the Garden of the Clear states to him before he leaves, the Loomer's about to take a step out. He says, be wary of the other waters. And Loomer turns around and says, thank you. And the Guardian, uh, which he just disappears. He, he vanishes out of the water. And the water dries up. It's basically just dry. So... Loomer acknowledges, or Loomer now understands this water, the Guardian, the Clear, only appears with the water to certain people. And, you know, he's the main character of the story, so he's special to us. So the water's now dry. There's no more water. And he sees the water kind of like descent and create, like, it basically goes down into the ground and uh, disappears. It's just a dry, um, just a dry, uh, floor now. So Limer steps out. He backs away, just seeing the amazement of, of what just happened. He feels stronger, feels mightier, and ready practically for a new bout. Uh, basically, ready to move on. At this point, does anything happen? Twelve. Something. Okay, so no modifier. Twelve is a, a high, maybe. Something does happen. Just got to figure out what. Let's pull a card. And we pulled. Nine of intelligence, which is uh, someone meditating or someone doing some magic. So I'm going to go simple this one. It's something of magic. And after there's a, uh, a grave mind or whatever that's called behind this person. We call, we pulled this card before. Someone is lurking in a distance. That's how I'm going to see this card. Because this this person in the card, it's, um, it's Loomer. I'm going to go saying that's Loomer. He's focused. He's ready. But there's something deep. There's some danger in the distance that's watching Loomer at this point. So what I'll do, I'm going to put this card right here. And I'm going to write down that we just healed. We just healed. But something is watching, is watching Loomer. Or I should say us, because we're not part of the story. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's all I can do for now for this episode. Um, I'm going to try, I'm, you know, I'm on vacation for this week, taking, taking a week off, and I've uh, got family in town. You know, it's almost Thanksgiving. Or, I'm sorry, it's almost, uh, you know, holidays, Christmas, et cetera. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna try to do a couple episodes this week. It's so, you know, it's going to be kind of interesting, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, I really appreciate you guys following along for the story of the escape. This is chapter seven, eight. I'm losing track, but I, you know, I'm glad to be doing this. And I'm going to keep this card here and keep what we have on the, on the mat just to keep the track of the story. So as always, thank you for watching 830 RPG and I'll see you guys next time.